The authors have no conflicts of interest to disclose. Local Institutional Review Board approval is not required for surgical educational videos. We present an approach for the surgical management of a stenotic cervix in an outpatient hysteroscopy setting with video demonstrations. Gynecologists require intrauterine access for a number of procedures. Even experienced practitioners can have difficulty with a stenotic cervix. This formidable opponent is encountered when the cervical canal is too narrow to allow insertion of a 2.5 millimeter HEGAR or Pratt dilator. Non-surgical management of the stenotic cervix has been described, such as concurrent ultrasound guidance or cervical ripening agents. These include osmotic dilators, mesoprostol, or dinoprostone. A recent Cochrane review showed that there is moderate quality evidence that mesoprostol is more effective than placebo or no treatment, but is associated with more side effects, such as preoperative pain and bleeding. While not used routinely as part of our center's outpatient hysteroscopy protocol, medical management of the stenotic cervix can be considered either on its own or as an adjunct to surgical management of the stenotic cervix. An outpatient hysteroscopy suite has a number of advantages over the operating theater and typically uses hysteroscopes with a smaller operative canal than traditional instruments. Previous study has noted that a high level expertise is not a prerequisite to performing hysteroscopy on an outpatient basis. We have previously published on the satisfaction of outpatient hysteroscopy. There was a less than 4% failure rate and over 85% of patients reported receiving excellent to very good care in all aspects of their periprocedural experience and all respondents know that they would recommend this procedure to a friend. One series of over 31,000 patients undergoing office hysteroscopy has been published, and they describe very similar hysteroscopic techniques as the ones that will be described in our video, such as mechanical adhesiolysis with the end of the hysteroscope, push and spread blunt adhesiolysis with grasping forceps, or sharp adhesiolysis with micro scissors. Access to the uterine cavity was possible in almost 94% of patients, Within this population, over 10,000 patients had cervical stenosis, and access into the uterine cavity for the complete evaluation of the whole endometrial surface was possible in almost 99% of cases. We present the ease of a see and treat approach in an outpatient hysteroscopy setting to manage the stenotic cervix. As in all aspects of surgery, patient positioning is a key component and stirrups should be used. Surgical lighting improves the visualization. Patient discomfort can be minimized with routine oral analgesia and, if required, a paracervical block or conscious station. Although not routinely required, applying a tenaculum to the cervix can help straighten the angle and improve surgical technique. Oftentimes, these simple steps can allow passages through what was previously described as a stenotic cervix. Vaginoscopy is a first step to the no-touch hysteroscopy technique and decreases patient discomfort by avoiding both the speculum and tenaculum. The hysteroscope is inserted under direct visualization into the vagina and the extension medium retracts the walls of the vagina. By following the posterior wall as shown here, the posterior fornix is eventually visualized. By slowly retracting the hysteroscope, the external cervical os will be seen. The cervical mucus or glands or following the transformation zone can help localization. By advancing slowly, the distension medium dilates the cervical canal ahead, and even a tortuous path through the cervix can be navigated. Adjusting the angle of the camera prevents damage to delicate vasculature within the canal, which decreases patient discomfort and improves visualization. Careful technique can be almost pain free and allow excellent assessment of the uterine cavity. A stenotic cervix can be the result of thick adhesions at the external os, internal os, or throughout the length of the canal. The cause is commonly due to a sharp keratage of previous treatment for cervical dysplasia. Micro scissors can be used for revision of the cervical canal. They pass through the operative canal of the hysteroscope and can sharply dissect tissue. For these thick adhesions of the external os, the familiar push-spread technique can be adapted to allow safe dissection. The fibrous adhesions usually allow only a small amount of distension, but enough to visualize the direction of the cervical canal as shown here. In the awake patient, feedback is extremely helpful as division of fibrous scar tissue 
is pain-free, where it increased pain would suggest division of normal cervical or uterine tissue. Progressive division of adhesions allows further distension of the cervical canal head and eventually access into the uterine cavity. This technique of sharp dissection can be adapted to division of intrauterine adhesions as well. Micro scissors and micrograspers can be used to remove specimens both within the cervical canal and the uterine cavity. Another similar technique uses micrograspers to push and spread, which bluntly lyses the adhesions. One advantage is that injury to normal cervical or uterine tissue is minimized, but this technique is limited to a cervix that is only partially stenosed and to adhesions that are not overly fibrotic, as shown in this video here. A stenotic cervix can be narrowed to the point that even a mini hysteroscope cannot be inserted. In these patients, aggressive blind dilation can significantly increase the risk of uterine perforation. The width of a cutting loop electrode is significantly smaller than a hysteroscope and can oftentimes be advanced into a stenotic canal. By removing a small amount of the cervical depth, the overall cross-sectional area of the cervical canal is increased and can prevent advancement of a larger hysteroscope. By progressively removing a small amount of cervical depth, increasing the cross-sectional area, and further extending the cervical canal head, you can access the uterus. This particular case is performed in the main operating theater, a loop excision can be performed in the outpatient setting as well. A safe excision of tissue can be performed as long as the operating instrument is kept within the visual field. We presented here an approach to the stenotic cervix, which includes optimizing the environment, no-touch hysteroscopy, and revision of the cervical canal with microinstruments or loop electrode. These techniques can be applied in an outpatient hysteroscopy setting and also adapted for use in an operating theater. This video was brought to you by the Ottawa Minimally Invasive Gynecology Team.